What happened to Alan Turing, the mathematician that cracked the Nazi Enigma code? Greetings, podcast listeners. In this episode, I'll be speaking about how Alan Turing cracked the Nazi's Enigma code and what happened to him after the Second World War had ended. Alan Turing was born on the 23rd of June, 1912, in Maida Vale, London, England. His home here is recorded by a blue plaque, which is a permanent English heritage sign. Turing was the son of a civil servant and was educated at a top private school. In the 1920s, science was considered a second-class pursuit in English public schools, hence Turing's passion for science embarrassed his mother, who had hoped he would study the classics, which was the most acceptable pursuit for a gentleman like himself. At school, he received poor grades. Surprisingly, his maths and science grades were allegedly not much better. He entered the University of Cambridge to study mathematics in 1931. After graduating in 1934, he was elected to a fellowship at King's College in recognition of his research on the theory of probability. In 1936, Turing's seminal paper was recommended for publication by the American mathematical logician Alonzo Church, who had himself just published a paper that reached the same conclusion as Turing's, although by a different method. This was the idea for the universal Turing machine, the basis for the first computer. Turing's method had profound significance, even greater than that of Church's, for the emerging science of computing. Later that year, following a recommendation by Church, Turing moved to Princeton University in New Jersey, the USA, to study for a PhD in mathematical logic. He completed his education here in 1938. In the summer of 1938, Turing returned to his fellowship at King's College and joined the Government Code and Cipher School. When war with Germany broke out in September 1939, he moved to the organisation's wartime headquarters at Bletchley Park in Buckinghamshire. A few weeks prior, the Polish government had given Britain and France details of the Polish successes against Enigma, the principal cipher machine used by the German military to encrypt radio communications. By 1938, Radziewski's team had devised a code-breaking machine they called the Bomber. However, the bomber depended on German operating procedures for its successes, and after a change in Germany's procedures in May 1940, in line with their increase in security, they began to change the cipher system daily, rendering the Polish bomber useless. During the autumn of 1939 and the spring of 1940, Turing and others designed a related but very different code-breaking machine known as the bomb. For the rest of the war, bombs gave the Allies the ability to intercept extensive quantities of military intelligence, and by early 1942, the decoders at Bletchley Park were decoding about 39,000 intercepted messages each month, a figure that actually rose to more than 84,000 per month, which is two messages every minute, daytime and nighttime. In 1942, Turing also devised the first systematic method for breaking messages encrypted by the sophisticated German cipher machine that the British called Tunny. At the end of the war, Turing was made an officer of the most excellent order of the British Empire, which is known in short as OBE, for his code-breaking work. When the war had ended in 1945, Turing was recruited to the National Physical Laboratory, NPL, in London to create an electronic computer. His design for the automatic computing engine, ACE, was the first complete specification of an electronic stored program, all-purpose digital computer. If Turing's ACE design had been properly followed, it would have had vastly more memory than any of the other early computers, as well as being faster. However, his colleagues at NPL thought that the engineering was too difficult to attempt, so they built a much smaller machine, the pilot model ACE 1950. Afterwards, Turing continued his involvement in developing computers, and he was interested by artificial intelligence. In 1950, he developed a test for artificial intelligence, which is still used today. Turing received a high honour with his election as a fellow to the Royal Society of London in March 1951. But sadly, in March 1952, he was arrested for gross indecency, because he was gay and homosexuality was a crime in Britain at that time. Upon his arrest, which occurred following a brief relationship with another man, it is said that his first statement was that he believed homosexuality should not be against the law. His arrest for homosexuality was likely rather unsurprising to his friends as he was open with those at King's College in Cambridge, which at the time was rather accepting, almost a sort of safe space. 
However, his subsequent conviction resulted in him being sentenced to 12 months of hormone therapy, leading to chemical castration, which left Turing unable to achieve an erection or orgasm, and caused the growth of breasts through gynecomastia. As his criminal record was created, he would no longer be allowed to work for Government Communications Headquarters, GCHQ, the British government's post-war code-breaking centre, especially as in that day and age where homosexualities were considered to be security risks. In defiance of his sentencing, he travelled abroad to Norway, which was more liberal, and the Mediterranean, where in Italy male homosexuality was legal since 1890, and Greece, where male homosexuality became legal in 1951. In 1952, Turing studied morphogenesis, which became a completely new field of mathematical biology. Morphogenesis was a mathematical explanation of how things grow, a great mystery to science until Turing's research and work, which has now been cited over 8,000 times. This interest in morphogenesis was seen in his childhood through a sketch which shows Turing as a boy watching the daisies grow while other children play field hockey. In May 1953, Turing was appointed to a specially created readership in the theory of computing in Manchester. Sadly, on June 7, 1954, he was found dead in his bed, poisoned by cyanide. Although suicide cannot be ruled out, it is also possible that his death was an accident, caused by inhaling cyanide fumes from an experiment in the laboratory adjoining his bedroom. There are also rumours that he was found with a half-eaten apple laced with cyanide next to him. At the time of his death, the public had no idea what he had contributed to the war effort. In fact, it was not really until the release of the Oscar-nominated film The Imitation Game in 2014 that the name Alan Turing became more widely known. In 2009, following protests, Prime Minister Gordon Brown and the Queen expressed their apologies for how Turing was treated and forced to undergo hormonal treatments, describing his treatment as horrific. In 2013, Queen Elizabeth posthumously pardoned Turing, and in 2017, a law, widely known as the Alan Turing Law, was passed, officially pardoning those who were historically convicted of homosexuality up to that date. Thank you for listening to this episode of my podcast. Please share my podcast with your friends and family, and subscribe to be notified when the next episode is released. Thank you, and goodbye.